Hey guys, Christy with Stone Family Farmstead here with uh, episode four or video number four in my Making Fruit Wine video series. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how much sediment is at the bottom of our wine and we're going to find out whether we want to um, let it settle for another 30 days or if we are going to bottle it up. So let's take a look. Before we get started with this, I wanted to give a shout out to RushOrderTees.com who made this apron for me, personalized with Stone Family Farmstead on it, and I love it. And I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, you can also get a personalized apron of your own if you go to RushOrderTees.com and they have this style but they also have um, lots of other styles so head over there and check it out okay so this is what the sediment looks like on the bottom of my wine so you can see all this thick stuff down here but i don't think the camera is showing this but there's actually kind of a layer right here too that's just sort of floating there I'm not sure what that is. I haven't seen that before. I'll see if I can grab a picture of it for you. So what I'm deciding to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and just siphon all of this out and I am going to put it in a clean jug. So this one has been in storage so I'm going to need to clean it, sanitize it, and uh, when I'm ready to do that I'll come back and show you how to do that. Okay? So I showed you before um, how to sanitize the uh, glass jar. I showed you that in I think probably video number two. But I never did show you how to sanitize this. And this is our siphon and hose and so I'm going to show you that really quick. Alright, so this is my star sand that I made. I usually make it and put it in here and it's going to be important that we sanitize all of the siphon. So I don't know how easy it is for you to see everything. Okay, I realize my head is cut off here so I the point is is that I want you to see the action of the siphon and how I'm doing this and so basically what I'm doing is I put the siphon into the cup that has star sand in it and then I'm going to put the end of the hose right back in here because it's fine you know it doesn't matter so um, all I'm trying to do is to bring the star sand through the whole siphon and so um, I'm just going to pump it through and um, I probably need to add more star sand here so that I can get it into the actual hose here or not the hose but this part here and um, you know as high up as the wine will go so Hopefully that will be enough and I think I'll go ahead and take what's left inside of the hose and um, maybe let it go down into here. Oh no, I'll just turn it over and try to make sure that we get the whole inside there. If for some reason you feel like you haven't gotten the whole inside of the hose, um, just go ahead and pour some star sand in and maybe plug up both sides and shake it around a bit. And so, um, and then let everything dry. Whenever you're uh, sanitizing something with star sand, you let it dry completely. You're not going to rinse it off or anything like that. You're just going to let it dry completely and then you'll work with it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the airlock and the um, stopper set those aside and I'm going to put my siphon in so I showed you before that there was kind of a thick layer of sediment in the bottom so that tells me I 
I'm probably going to be transferring some of the sediment from this one to this one. And then I'm going to need another 30 days in this jug to let everything settle. It might not take 30 days. It, it could take less than that. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this into the jug. If it overflows, you, all you need to do is just make sure that your hose is in the other jug and just siphon a little bit off before you put it all the way to the bottom. But I am going to just start siphoning. And you can see, uh oh, try not to move uh, your siphon around too much because you'll disturb the sediment and the sediment will just transfer into, into the other jug. So just be very deliberate about this. And uh, on my other video, I believe it was the number one video I talked about with the siphon, it has this tip at the, at the bottom of it that goes into the bottom of the jug that actually is maybe not an inch tall, but maybe three quarters of an inch tall. And so if you set it down into the jug, it should hopefully not pick up the sediment that's there at the bottom. Okay, so you can still see maybe that the wine is a little cloudy still yet. That's okay. Uh, the more times that you do this and that you let the sediment settle, the clearer your wine will be. And that's just really personal preference. I've actually just bottled it from here before. And um, it does leave a lot of sediment in your wine bottles. So um, if that's yucky, it's kind of yucky. But if it seems yucky to you, just go ahead and uh, siphon it off a couple times and really the more uh, time that you give between consuming the wine and it being finished you know the clearer and the better tasting your wine is going to be so as you can see we're getting almost full again you know try not to allow this to move around too much because um, you don't want to disturb the sediment at the bottom. Oh, okay, so now it's starting to look like it's getting to the place where it doesn't want to pick any more up. And so it seems like there's actually kind of a lot um, left on the bottom. And it might even, it might even be, uh, be okay. So, um, let's see, maybe I can gently pick up the hose, let it drain, and there's still some here. And so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just kind of let it drip there for a little bit. I don't know how long I want to hold this, but it seems to be draining into, into the bottle slowly or into the jug slowly. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait for this to finish up. And then we'll move on to what to do now that we've got only this much wine in the jug. So I think I'm going to try something a little different. At the very bottom of this jar there's a really really stark line of sediment there. That's what I don't want to disturb but I think because I want to just um, go ahead and get more wine for this jug I'm going to tilt this and hopefully not disturb the sediment. Some of the cloudy wine will, will go into this jug, but it'll fill up more and I'll lose less of the wine. It just may take 
a few extra rackings or transfers in order to get all the sediment out. But every time you do another racking, it will be uh, clearer and clearer. So if you're in a super big hurry to drink your wine, um, you know, 30 days is fine, especially with a strawberry wine. Um, but if you want really clear wine, like gift giving wine, you know, something that other people will enjoy, it'll be really good if you were to make this, you know, say in the summer and then just rack it a few times before you bottle. Okay. And what I mean by racking is just transferring it into a new jug. So I think I've got a good bit done. And I'm going to see if I can allow this to drain. Whoops. Out of the out of the siphon hose and then I'm going to do what I did last time and let this go ahead and drain into this jug. Then we'll take a look at what the bottom of, well actually let's take a look now. So while I'm holding on to this siphon and allowing it to or the racking cane and allowing the racking cane to drain, take a look at what's left in the jug. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's got that whole, it's got the whole bunch of sediment left on the bottom there. So all that did not go into the new jug. And so, um, yeah, we should have another line at the bottom of this jug after a few weeks as well. And then uh, every time we do it, there will be less and less and it'll be a clearer and clearer wine. So now that we have put as much wine as we can without transferring a lot of the sediment in, you'll see that it's, it comes up to about this level in the jar. So, so what we need to do, because this is a finished batch, it's, there's no more fermenting to happen with this batch, um, we need to actually top it up to about here. And we're going to use boiled water with that. The boiling action actually removes any oxygen from the water. So you're going to boil that the water and then you're going to allow it to cool to room temperature and then you'll top up your your wine so um, if you had to top it up like while fermentation was still happening it would be fine because the action of the fermentation and um, the fact that the co2 gases can leave the airlock um, without problem, they're being pushed out of the jug, um, then you can top up with regular uh, water, like regular tap water or something, or distilled water is best. But um, whatever it is you use, whether it be boiled and cooled water, or um, distilled water, or regular water, you would make sure that you top off correctly. So because this is done fermenting, I am going to boil some water, let it cool to room temperature, and then add it. So for now, I'm going to put the airlock back on because I want uh, there not to be too much exposure to oxygen because that can lead to spoilage. So I've got my water that I boiled and removed the oxygen from and so now I am going to add it to the wine that I just transferred to the new jug. And so I'll show you that. So we're going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the stopper and the airlock. And we're going to have sanitized 
our funnel and we're going to use that to pour it in. And we're going to just pour it up to about here. And again, the reason why we're doing that is because we want the smallest amount of oxygen to be in here as possible. So, um, also we're going to, you can use the same airlock if you want to. Just go ahead and sanitize it again. And um, make sure that you have enough water in the airlock. Okay? And then... That's it. So now we're pretty much done and we're going to wait a few more weeks and then we're going to use this same process pretty much um, to tra either transfer it into another uh, sanitized jug or to um, go ahead and just bottle it up. So I probably won't do another video until it's time to bottle up, but um, other than that, you know, that's all we've got for today, okay? Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to check the show notes because I'm going to have the book that I'm using that I got this recipe from. I'll have a list of the things that you need for this part of the project plus all the links, the affiliate links to those so that you can see what they look like or whatever just in case you don't, you're not familiar completely with uh, what each thing is called. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so that you could get the rest of the videos. And if you haven't seen the first three videos in this series, it is in a playlist on my channel. And um, it's called Making Fruit Wines. And so, like I said before, there's going to be, you know, probably about five videos in this series. And um, you will be able to watch them all through. And so, thanks a lot for watching. See you later. Bye.